sooner or later, one way or another, you will be calling me champ. Yeah. LA Knight is the next big thing. But I know the term the next big thing gets thrown around in WWE like the New Day and their pancakes. And I also know that over the years, there have been numerous wrestlers that have been associated with this phrase, but have not lived up to the hype. To name a few, Lex Luger, Mr. Kennedy, Alberto Del Rio, and even Drew McIntyre back in his first run with WWE, all were slapped with being Vince McMahon's next pet project, but failed. However, when we look at LA Knight and the current form he's in, there is no doubt the comparison can be made with himself and some of the greats, such as Stone Cold and The Rock. So let me explain. Gentlemen, you had my curiosity. But now you have my attention. To kick things off, many fans might be surprised to know this about LA Knight, but prior to even joining WWE, he trained on the independent circuit under his real name, Sean Ricker. And whilst at NWA in 2010, he had a very special manager by his side, one that most WWE fans would be familiar with, the legendary Paul Bearer. Over the years in NWA, he battled many men who would go on to make names for themselves, including Brian Cage and even current WWE authority figure Adam Pearce. Paul Bearer, known as Percy Pringle, was his manager for many of those bouts. He was by his side until the very end, managing Ricker until just shortly before his death. The reason why it's important to note this is Paul Bearer was the first person who believed in his potential and supported his career from the start. LA Knight said it best himself when he did a tribute promo for him. Percy Pringle left me with a message. He said, I love you. You have great things coming your way and he was right. It is a really cool fact to know that the legendary Undertaker and LA Knight were both managed by the same person. So when the two of them came face to face, it was a bit of a moment, something he mentioned in an interview himself. Uh, when you're standing in that ring and that bell tolls, you know, it's chill. Both of you managed by Paul Bear. Three years, three years that guy led me to the ring and I, I love him. Uh, anytime I ever had to ask him anything, he was like, it wasn't even like he was willing to give it, it was beyond that. It was like, he was so grateful to have an outlet to give any kind of advice or insight. So a lot of you may not know that LA Knight was in WWE's developmental program in 2013. He worked in NXT under the ring name of Slate Randall. He wasn't a top guy back then as he was more of an enhancement talent that would put over other superstars. But it is important to know this about the time when he started using the iconic and the way it came about was kinda accidental. It was whilst he was at the performance center at WWE, whilst being trained by coaches and trainers, Knight would always say yeah! when receiving advice. At the time, his trainers thought he was being rude and started to make fun of him and take shots. So LA Knight decided to lean into it further where he started to joke around with them for the way he talked. To be honest, he explains it better in this interview with Chris. When he'd talk to me personally and he'd be saying stuff, you know, some people will go, uh huh. Mm -hmm. I would keep just going, yeah. Kind of like almost took offense, but like in a joking way where so I leaned into that. So now he would be saying stuff and I'd just be like, yeah. It's crazy to think LA Knight can get more of a reaction from a single word than most wrestlers get from an entire monologue. Yeah. LA Knight knew that things weren't working out and if putting over other talent had remained his career trajectory, 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 he would have never become a big deal. He was eventually released on the 1st of August in 2014, but LA Knight believed his release wasn't an issue of talent. I got let go the first time, it wasn't because of talent issue, and that was made very clear to me. Uh, it was it was very much a professional issue, and the way that things were going were not good. With this line of thinking and the heat behind the scenes at WWE, LA Knight used the independent circuit to make a name for himself, just like Cody Rhodes and Drew McIntyre did when they left the company many years ago. However, this also reminds me of a certain rattlesnake. When Stone Cold left WCW to make a bigger name for himself, he was wasn't seen as a top guy and went on to join ECW. So you can see where the comparisons can be made, right? Give me a hell yeah! 
As a result of his release in 2014, LA Knight joined Impact Wrestling in 2015 and his new persona was created, Eli Drake. It was at this point when the world got a little taste of who LA Knight really is. During his time in Impact Wrestling, LA Knight won the Impact World Championship and the Impact World Tag Team Championship. Knight went on to showcase his in-ring talent during his time with the company, but it was his ability to cut top tier promos that got people talking online. His fact of life segments and taking shots at his opponents made him one of the best trash talkers in the company, which doesn't surprise me why he gets compared to Stone Cold or The Rock once again. But eventually, Knight left Impact in 2019. One would think that he would return to WWE, considering the amount of support he had gathered. However, Knight did what most stars wouldn't probably do. He joined NWA. Dummy. Yeah. Yeah. LA Knight stated that he would have returned to WWE a lot sooner, but the only problem was the money WWE was paying. He stayed with other promotions for a bit longer because they paid Knight better than what WWE was offering. But as time went on, he returned to NXT in 2021, finally getting a second chance at success after being so broke that he stated he never even had a proper bank account in the last 10 years, nor a car for some time. Therefore, Knight decided to take the chance. However, as soon as he returned, not everything was smooth sailing. One would think that Knight would have gone on to do much greater things once he joined the main roster, but that wasn't the case. Not with Vince still being in charge. <laughs> Realistically, Knight should have become a top guy the very moment he debuted on the main roster. But the good old Vince had something different in mind. Here's the thing, Triple H made stars back in the black and gold days of NXT. Vince never saw Triple H's guys as top stars, plain and simple. Apart from a handful of professional wrestlers, Vince killed much of NXT's talent like Keith Lee, Karrion Cross, Pete Dunne and Bobby Roode. And what did did Vince have in mind for LA Knight you may ask? He renamed him to Max Dupree, manager of the Maximum Male Models? For weeks, Knight's hype was dying, to the point his segments were the worst on TV. There came a time when Knight was removed from the stable and Maxine Dupree took control as the manager. It was being reported that LA Knight had rubbed some people the wrong way and he wasn't fitting in. Max Dupree didn't last very long. The character was never quite able to get off the ground, leading WWE to revert him back to LA Knight and since then, his popularity has skyrocketed. The man himself revealed that he's pretty sure he was fired before WWE assigned him the Max Dupree gimmick. Take a look. Well, let me just uh, go ahead and say this. I'm pretty sure I was I was fired and it just hadn't officially happened yet. <laughs> I don't remember what it was, but some things happened. And then I had gotten a, uh, a FaceTime. Hey, uh, you know, we, we want to keep you around. We want to do this, this, that, whatever. And uh, okay, cool, good. So somehow I'd been saved from being thrown off the cliff. At least this is my interpretation of it. Things are working the way they are and the people reacting the way they are is because one of these was not me and I didn't know who it was. And one of these is very much just me. Like I don't have to think about LA Knight. So from almost getting fired again, LA Knight changed things instantly when he debuted as a cocky heel. He promised like so many have before him that he will be the biggest star in NXT and to help make the fans see just how good Knight can be. He inserted himself straight into the NXT North American Championship scene, stepping up to then champion Johnny Gargano. In the end, it was a smart move by WWE as some fans don't keep up with Impact Wrestling and the work he did there. So putting him in a feud with a top star, it would only enhance his already great skills. But fear not, as everyone was blessed with the beautiful promos that Knight cut every week. And the great storylines as well. A great example is his feud against Cameron Grimes for the Million Dollar Championship, which made it even better for me. It was perfect. Perfect. Everything. Down to the last 
minute details. And roundabout here is where the comparison amongst all fans started kicking in, as the promos and the way LA Knight talks often sounded like a certain Brahma bull. If you smell. Knight would even go on to mention it himself, that they both sound the same and even cut promos very similar. You know, it's funny when I did the when I did the hero. There were some times where one of us would be talking without seeing who was on screen, and both people that were watching it with me and myself sometimes wouldn't know because we have very similar tones and, and voice. For even more proof, you can even do a side by side of himself with The Rock and Stone Cold, where we can see that a similar methodology and acting is perpetuated, ranging from cutting promos and even the way they speak on the mic is near identical to the former legends. Let me talk to you. Finally. If you follow you'll find the exact directions of where you can stick each and every one of those bottles of prime. Yeah! You like wearing your WWE belt? He'll go ahead and take that WWE belt from you, put a little icy hot on it, turn it sideways, and take it straight up your candy ass! Yeah! 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 What? 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 Therefore, with LA Knight getting his old gimmick back under WWE and the leadership of Triple H, it was without a doubt one of the best decisions the game had made ever since he took control of the creative story. We got the same LA Knight the fans fell in love with in the first place. People who don't keep up with NXT also got to witness the great talker that Knight is. So, can I get a- Hell yeah! It wasn't until he feuded with Bray Wyatt that made LA Knight a real sensation. Bray Wyatt made his long awaited return in the company at Extreme Rules and the fans were eager to see who his first rival would be. Instead of going back to the past superstars Wyatt has faced, Triple H set up a feud between Wyatt and LA Knight. For weeks, both superstars went back and forth with each other and Knight shined with the promos he cut on Wyatt. Bray also did a fantastic job of being cryptic with his promos and the inclusion of Uncle Howdy was simply the cherry on top. The feud concluded at Royal Rumble this year, where Wyatt defeated Knight in a pitch black match. And uh, let's just not remember the match, shall we? While the feud ended at a relatively low point, Knight didn't shy in admitting to Inside the Ropes that this feud put him on the map. Well, I feel like that whole thing, that, that whole interaction for those few months kind of put me on the map for a little bit. Make the most of the minutes, as they say, because whether you're going to give me 30 seconds or 30 minutes, I'm going to make the damnedest of it. I'm going to make you remember it. After the feud, LA Knight kept doing his thing of cutting great promos and having solid feuds with the likes of Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. And fans ate that shit up. And it wasn't until March when the crowd really showed the love for LA Knight. And he said it best himself. Back in March, we were in D.C., Seamus and Drew were in the ring and then all of a sudden that music hit and I walked out and I remember it just kind of hit me and I was like, that's, that's different. He was shocked and astounded with the response he gets. So when he eventually appeared in the men's Money in the Bank ladder match in London, he had the entire crowd in the palm of his hands. The fans and myself wanted him to win the whole thing so badly, but the company didn't pull the trigger. Here's the deal. WWE sometimes has an issue with rising stars. They want to shove the talents down our throats that they feel are worthy for the fans time but when you start to ignore a talent that has got over on his own then things don't end up well in the end this is something that has happened with guys like dean ambrose cesaro and dolph ziggler la knight deserves to be pushed not because of his charisma but because of his ability of organically getting over with the fans just go back and see the number of wins he had last year he has lost many matches and despite that fans chant yeah at the top of their lungs when they see the mega star. WWE failed to put him at WrestleMania this year, which took place in Los Angeles, and that was a huge misstep in my opinion. He was the right choice to win the men's money in the bank ladder match, but they opted for Damian Priest instead. WWE has a problem with pushing old superstars, but who cares if Knight is 40 years old? He's got the charisma and talent that we all want to see on screen. He's got the in-ring ability, and above all, 
level, he can talk better than 90% of the roster. Regardless of everything WWE has done in its power to make LA Knight look weak, he is more popular than ever and quite possibly the most over guy in the company. That's why recently he just declared he's going to be the next champion and we all want it. Can I get a... Yeah! So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and like and enjoy more peak WWE content with the video on your screen right now regarding banned moments that cannot air ever again.